taking you closer to heaven. Love 99.5 FM, taking you closer to heaven. Welcome to Word Explosion with Reverend Simon Apopo, Head Pastor of Grace Hope's Chapel. Do you need direction in life? Are you yearning for a closer walk with God? Are you desiring to be fruitful? The Word of God provides the answers. Feast on God's Word and let the grace of God envelop you as you listen to this life-changing message. Be blessed. We're going to read a very, very long passage. I just want you to follow me. Number 16. So I'm going to read the first 15 verses. We'll jump and then we're gone. Now Korah, son of Ezer, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and certain Rubenites, Dathan and Abiram, sons of Eliab, and On, sons of Pelet, became insolent. Somebody say insolent. And rose up against Moses with them were 250 Israelite men, well-known community leaders who had been appointed members of the council. Look at these important people. They came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron and said to them, you have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly. When Moses heard this, he fell face down. Five. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, In the morning the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses, he will cause to come near him. You, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. Take some senses, and tomorrow put burning coals and incense in them before the Lord. The man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. Moses also said to Korah, Now listen, you Levites. Isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelite community and brought you near himself to do the work at the Lord's tabernacle and to stand before the community and to minister to them? Is it not enough? Hmm? He has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself. But now you are trying to get the priesthood too. Hey, it is against the Lord that you and all your followers have banded together. Who is Aaron that you should grumble against him? The Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram, the son of Eliab. But they said, we will not come. Watch this, we will not come. Isn't it enough that you have brought us up out of the land flowing with milk and honey to kill us in this wilderness and now you also want to lord it over us? All right. Moreover, you haven't brought us into a brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Do you want to treat these men like slaves? No, we will not come. 15. Then Moses became very angry and said to the Lord, "Do not accept their offering." I've not taken so much as a donkey from them, nor have I wronged any of them. Let's jump to 31, 31 to 35 because of time. 31, please. Now, this is so important that the Bible records the whole story in 50 verses. 50 good verses goes into details for us to learn from. The Bible says these things were written for our learning. So it's not j- just there for being their sake. It's there to teach us the way to go and the way to operate as children of God. Now let's all read 31 to 35. Everybody, as soon as he finished saying all of this, the ground under, the, under them split apart and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their household. And all those associated with Korah, everybody, we are reading this together. And all those associated with Korah together with their what? Possessions. Are we reading? Okay, let's read together. Oh, it's not, it's not showing. Okay. Now they went down alive. Read from your Bible, please. Let me see how many of you brought Bibles. Lift it. Hey. 
and Asamo. Please lift it. Look, you can have an e-Bible, but by all means, you have to bring a Bible to church. By all means. All right. 33. They went down alive into the realm of the dead with everything they owned. They had close over them and they perished and were gone from the community. All right. At their cries, all the Israelites around them fled, shouting, The earth is going to swallow us too. 35. And fire came out from the Lord and consumed the 250 men who were offering incense. Amen. We're offering the incense. All right. Now, let's pause here. Please make sure that when you, when you have time, read the full story. 50 verses. Very important. All right. Now, we have understood that the problem is not with your mistakes because everybody does mistakes, but what you do with the mistakes, what you learn from the mistakes that you do. Uh, if you look at somebody like David, he did more mistakes than most kings. He did a lot of serious mistakes. But one of the things you notice about David is the fact that he did not repeat the same mistake twice or thrice. He did not repeat his mistakes. And that's a very important thing. That's a man who wants to grow and mature. So you're allowed to make mistakes, like I said, on Sunday. But you don't have to re keep repeating the same mistakes again and again. Otherwise, then you are not growing. Then you are not becoming wise. A wise person is the one who learns from his mistakes and become a better person. We have learned about the way of Cain, the mistake of Cain. We have learned also about the error of Balaam. But today, we want to look at probably the deadliest mistake of all the three. Of all the three mistakes we are dealing with, this is... The deadliest, the rebellion of Korah, it leads to destruction, great destruction, not just of yourself, your family, your environment, and everything around you. In fact, sometimes it leads to even the, the death of innocent people or the destruction of innocent people. One man's rebellion. As a matter of fact, in this rebellion, 15, almost 15,000 people died. 14,700 after. And 250, the original uh, rebels. Then another 14,700. So you know, almost 15,000 people were destroyed for this one rebel. So you see, rebellion is a very serious error. A mistake in is one of the deadliest. You don't have to joke with it. As a matter of fact, the Bible compares it to witchcraft. Mm. First Samuel 15, 23. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Very serious. Can you be fast for me, please? Rebellion is like the sin of divination. And arrogance like the evil of idolatry. To be arrogant is like you are worshipping idols. And because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you as Cain. So rebellion is compared to witchcraft or divination. Divination or witchcraft is a very serious thing. KJB says witchcraft is a dangerous spirit. And you have to avoid it in your own life and also run away as far as possible from every rebel. Don't associate with a rebel because you are in great danger by associating with such people. And I notice that God cannot stand rebellious people at all. Maybe because... This whole rebellion thing began from heaven. The first rebellion, a third of the angels, Satan took a third of the angels and they rose up against God. And they said, we are going to be like him. Is he the only boss? Is he the only superior? And there was war in heaven. And God had to cast them out. Get out! 
of my sight. God pushed all of them out of his sight onto the earth and said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Since then, God has had a zero tolerance for rebels. He cannot stand rebels. He deals with them very seriously. And the repercussions can be very dangerous. Who is a rebel? A rebel is somebody who rises up against God-ordained authority. God-chosen servants. You see, God likes authority. He believes in leadership. And he believes in his men, his chosen men. No matter their shortcomings, no matter their weaknesses, they are his men. They are his representatives on earth. And God is a God of order. He respects authority. He believes in leadership. And so you dare not rise up against God's chosen authority. As a matter of fact, anytime you try that, God says you are actually contending with him. He sees it at contention with him. God takes it personal when anybody tries to rise up against authority. He says, one day, Samuel was complaining that the people had rejected him. They wanted a king like the other kings. God says, stop crying. It is not you they have rejected. It's me. So anytime people rise up against authority, God says, it's me they are rising up against. I wish you had time to read Romans 13, 1 to 5. How God sees authority and how it is important to him and how you dare not rise up a rebellion against God's instituted authority. You bring distraction on your own self and not just on yourself, on everybody around you, your family and all of that. Lift your hand and say, I refuse to be a rebel. Oh, yeah. So you see, when I was in school, one of the things I, I didn't like at all were but where people who just rose up against authority say, Chobo, hey, and all students will be rising, and everybody just joined, and sometimes they don't even know what's happening. They just join, Chobo, then they just jump onto the bandwagon. Some of them were dismembered, their bodies, some of them, police came in to, I mean, a lot of, some of them were put in behind bars, and they didn't even know what was going on. They didn't even understand the issues at stake. So, ladies and gentlemen, this one is a serious matter, and the moment you start rebelling, you are coming into contention with God Almighty himself. You may be dealing with a man, but hear, hear me. If the man is chosen by God and God's choice, then, in effect, you are rising up against God, and the repercussions can be deadly. Somebody say deadly. All right. So, I want us tonight quickly to look at seven traits of a rebel. All right, so that just in case, <laughs> by some means, you are associated with a rebel, or you yourself are becoming rebellious, suddenly you will see yourself in two or three of these. Or if your friend is rebellious and you are associated with him, you can identify by seeing these traits and running away from such a person because the repercussions are serious. All right? And let me say that, you know, nobody sets out to be rebellious. It's a very subtle thing. It starts slowly. You start murmuring, complaining. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? And it goes on and it goes on. And by the time you are aware, your heart has been corrupted and you have become a, re a re rebellious person very subtle and sometimes when you are dealing with a rebellious person you may not know you may think he's a good brother a good sister and gradually he'll be poisoning your spirit against god ordained authority hey can i preach so i'm going to share with you these seven things so that anytime you start seeing these signs you must run away from the person as much as possible because he's endangering himself and he's endangering you. Hallelujah. Am I coming home? All right. The first thing is pride. 
the first sign that somebody is becoming very dangerous or he is becoming a rebel is pride. Look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Okay, before verse 1, look at verse, uh, you put 13 there. Let everyone be subjected to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist, verse 1, please. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Uh huh. 2, verse 2, quickly, please. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so bring judgment on themselves. Clear. Clear. So there's no ambiguity about it. The moment you start being a rebel, dangerous. Look at what's happening in Sudan. Now, look at the bloodshed. Look at the confusion. Look at all that. It's as a result of a rebel. Rebels, wherever they are, there's bloodshed. There's death. There's so much confusion. Innocent people die. So it's a very dangerous thing to even entertain. Hmm. Our God is a God of authority. So the first thing is pride. Your heart begins to get lifted. Let's look at our main story. Numbers chapter 16 verse 1. Quickly. Bible says, and he picked up himself. Okay. Datan and Abraham, and he, he, he joined, he made certain Rubenites. Datan, Abraham, sons of Eliab, and on son of Pellet, became insolent. They became insolent. Your heart is lifted up. When you see disrespect in a certain place, when people speak arrogantly, then you know that your heart is being lifted. You know that pride is setting in. He didn't used to speak like that. Suddenly he's speaking against authority. And hear me, whether in a workplace or wherever, be careful of such people. Oftentimes, in any healthy environment, there are places to, to, to show grievance. There are meetings, board, of, board meetings, end of month, something where you can bring out your grievance. But when you find people in groups, in corners, speaking, and the words they are coming out of their mouth is full of disrespect and insolence, you know that rebels are rising up. Very, very dangerous. By their speech, you can know them. Now, Okaso Yehwine. Okaso Yehwine. Who does it? Think? Is he the only person God speaks to? Who does it? Think? But the unfam ram be swear. Hmm. That's a rebellious spirit. The moment you see signs like that, run. You are in danger. One of the things God cannot tolerate is dishonor. Somebody said if you cut the, the if God had a body and you cut, the blood that flows is honor. God is a God of honor. So where there's disrespect and insolence, you know the spirit of God cannot be there. It's a rebellious spirit that has taken, started rearing its head. And it started with Satan in the, in the heavens when his heart was lifted up and said, I will be like God. It's the beginning of big trouble. Then you know trouble is coming. So that's the first sign. Watch how people speak. The Bible says pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall, Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction. Anytime you see people lifting up their shoulders, lifting up themselves, you know that they are about to destroy themselves. Me too, I can do it. Does he think he's the only person who can sing? Does he, da, 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 and they are going on. You can see that they are setting themselves up for destruction. Very dangerous spirit coming up. You must run. As early as possible. All right? 
So the first thing is pride and insolence. Compare their attitude to, to Moses' attitude. When Moses heard all of that, he fell face down. He, he just fell. So what are they talking about? That's a humble man. That, you know, the Bible says God gives more grace to the humble. The Bible says that Moses was the meekest man in the whole of the surface of the earth. That's God's man. I always say that in this house, we are passionate about humility. We are passionate and we hate pride like a, a, a demon because we know what pride can do. It has devastated in any society. When people lift themselves up, they set themselves up for trouble and distraction. When people come down, Bible says when Moses heard them, he lied face on the ground. Several times you see Moses even interceding for them. Why are you saying that? Why are they doing that? And when God is angry, Moses will say, Lord, have mercy. That's the spirit of humility. I pray that every one of us will have the spirit of humility. Great asset. Humility goes before promotion and exaltation. Hallelujah. Number two, rebels assume a sense of spirituality. And this is where the danger is. This is what makes it very subtle. Sometimes rebellious people assume a certain, they, they have the spiritual language. They act very spiritual. So if you are not discerning, you cannot see through it. You know how to quote the scriptures? We need to be very careful. The Bible says, look at, look at how this guy spoke. He said, is he the only holy person amongst them? Amongst us? Everyone is holy. Everyone has been sanctified by God. It sounds so spiritual, isn't it? It sounds so convincing. I mean, we brought it to the New Testament. You'll be quoting First Corinthians there about. For you are a chosen generation, a holy priesthood. We are all priests. We are all holy. So why is he setting himself about me too? I can talk to God. Yes, you can talk to God, but in God there's order, there's rank, there's an army of God. There's rank. We are all children of God, but we, we are not all on the same level. God has instituted people to have oversight. And you need to be careful, whether it's an elder, deacon, whatever. You may not agree with him, but be careful. But rebels have a language. And that language can sound so spiritual that if you are not careful, you will not be able to see through them. Now, can you imagine for a moment if you were with the apostles when Judas began to speak about that, uh, that uh, fragrance that Mary broke the bottle and poured on the head of Jesus ahead of his burial. And Judas was in their midst and begins to say, Oh, what a waste. Why all this waste on one man? Is he the only man in town? Why? Jesus does not even want this. This thing can, could have been sold. And the money given to the poor. How spiritual is it? Is it not spiritual? It sounds so spiritual. But he was a thief. He was looking for money to squander. But he couches in very spiritual terms. And if you are not careful, you will not be able to see through it. And you begin to side with that person. And that is the beginning of your trouble and distraction. Everyone is holy. Why does he set himself up above us? Everybody has been sanctified. We all came through the Red Sea baptized. We all came out of bondage. And we are heading towards the promise. Who does he think he is? Be careful of people with spiritual, high spiritual jargons. They speak like that, but it's empty. Such people can always say, I saw a vision. I saw a vision. Hey, Reverend, I saw a vision. Hey, brother, you see, I saw something. Be careful of them. It sounds so spiritual, but it's empty. 
Paul says, they say, taste not, touch not, and hear not. It has a sense of spirituality, but it is empty, vague, has nothing in it. I've always said, I'm very wary of super spiritual people. By experience, I've seen the people that are always spiritualizing everything. Watch them. Watch them. Thank you for listening to Word Explosion with Reverend Simon Ampafo. We believe you've been blessed. For more life-changing messages, please make a date with us. We invite you to worship with us at Grace Hill Chapel, Lahujo. Some meters away from Lametta Hotel and directly behind Charisse Hotel. Our Sunday service is at 8:30 a.m. and our midweek service is on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. For more information, please call 0552-505083. Email us at admin at graceful org or visit our website www.gracefields.org you can join the reverend simon amphofo page on facebook you can also follow grace Host chapel on facebook twitter and instagram we'll love to hear from you it's your season of grace is from Don Moen. As the waters come, a song titled Our Father. See our heart and remove anything that is dead. Many thanks to Reverend Simon Ampofo of the Great Fields Chapel for bringing us today's word on Daily Focus. It was dubbed the era of Kura. Well, I'm sure that by now you know the days where the pastors come through. Because on Mondays, Joel Osteen takes his turn. Erika J.B. Diakon of the New Life City Chapel comes on on Tuesdays. Bishop Dr. Victor Say comes on on um, Wednesdays from the Family Chapel International. Reverend David Seth Kwanza of the Mick Country Chapel, he comes on on Thursdays. And on Fridays like this, Simon and Puffer comes your way. We'll be Alright, so it's now time for us to bring to you Love in the Morning right here on Love 99.5 FM. It feels good. Love 99.5 FM. 99.5 FM.